ahead guys. I'm gonna let everybody just kind of get tuned in. Let's see what's the best place for this at. My uh, screen is a little bit delayed, so let me turn down the volume. Maybe this way a little bit, huh? Um, while you're waiting, go ahead and shake up your bottles. Give them a good tap on the, the butt, spank them a little bit. Make sure you got your finger over the lid so it doesn't come open, pop every burr. And get your paint good and mixed up because it will have a lot of um, water on your first squirt if you don't like a ketchup. And you're not gonna like that. So make sure you got it real shook, shook up real well. <clears throat> and we're gonna start with practice sessions. This is what we're gonna be creating today. This is the background, and we're going to do the characters uh, maybe tomorrow or this week sometime. But uh, this is how far we're going to get today. And you're going to need your blackboard, so I'm going to put this one aside. Where's everybody from? You can also go ahead and get um, these colors out. We may get more out for um, when we start the, the actual painting. This is for your practice session, just to give you a little variety of colors, but these are the same colors that we'll be using um, as well, along with purple. I need to add purple. South Carolina, Oregon, Philadelphia, that's a far one. Tennessee, I kinda wanna move to Tennessee, New Hampshire. Mesa, Arizona, SoCal, oh, Amanda Rose, uh, Georgia, North Dakota, all over, guys, that's good, Wisconsin, Arizona, Utah, gosh, we're, going, we're representing all the states, Florida, okay, is everybody kind of ready, or do you guys need a little bit of time? Massachusetts, Orlando. Somebody gets to go to Disney World all the time. Give me a thumbs up in the emojis if you're ready. Hearts will work too. <laughs> Someone's really ready. Lots of thumbs. Okay, these will be the, the three brushes that we're gonna use today. <clears throat> um, we won't use any other ones besides this. And I really wanna go over brush care really quick. Um, those of you who are familiar with painting, um, just it'll give you time more time to get ready. But it's important for people who maybe don't aren't familiar with painting on how to treat your brushes and make them last a little bit longer. Now these are our cheaper brushes. One brush usually costs what a whole pack of these cost. So, you know, but we still wanna, to, to, you know, treat them kindly. So I have a bucket like this. I know it's disgusting and gross, um, but there is slats at the bottom that help get the paint off. When you have paint on your brush, you wanna rub it on the bottom lightly. Don't smash it. Just rub it lightly to get the paint off a few swipes. Get the excess water off and then go over to your paper towel, which I'll move over here so you guys can see. And you wanna go like this, okay? Especially with flat angle brushes. These are what these are called, or flat angle brushes. Um, because if you take it down and smash it like this to dry it and go all around, see what happens to the bristles? Versus if you take it and dry it like this, how much kinder your bristles are. So as much as you can with the brushes, you want to um, keep them going, the hairs going in the same way that, that they should be going at all times, even when you rinse and dry. Um, when you set it down, I try to pinch mine and pull it like that so that it's stored in the same way and then it will dry like this instead of the hairs being all crazy and wild because if it dries crazy and wild, your brush is ruined. <clears throat> so same thing with these are uh, more like detail brushes. This one's not very good. I'm not very happy with this one that's in that pack. Um, if we keep doing these, I'm gonna move on to better detail brushes. I'm gonna have you guys purchase a, a good detail brush because they're really important. 
So when you rinse this, same thing. Don't smash it on the bottom because you can imagine the hairs are gonna go like this when you smash it on the bottom. You just wanna lightly touch the bottom, go like this. And then when I dry this one, I dry it like this and I roll it. I roll it to keep it in the point. So you wanna always roll like that. And if you wanna remove excess paint, it's side to side, side to side. And you can roll a little bit too while you're doing that if you wanna move excess paint. I remove excess paint all the time. So that's not gonna hurt it without water. That's not gonna hurt it. You just wanna do that. Make sure you don't smash it and do circles. A lot of people smash and do circles to rinse their brushes and you don't wanna do that. It'll make it fray. So always roll these, okay? So that's for those angles and pointer. Um, let's start with um, the practice board, one of your practice boards. I'm probably only gonna use one today. And we're just gonna go over basics of having of using a angle brush. We're gonna use our large brush. <clears throat> I have a delay, so sorry, I'm watching my delay. It takes it a while to catch up. Um, and you're going to, let's start with it like this. Let's do this way, we'll get more use out of it. So start at the top, the smaller top. And go ahead and dip it into the white and load your brush. Now you don't need to take it all the way up here, you just need the, the tip of it, okay? And I kind of get the excess off on the edge of the plate. So it looks, should look like this. No, I'm right-handed. It's just mirroring probably. So when you start painting, it's the same thing as when you're wiping off your brush. It's side to side, side to side. You're gonna get the most coverage that way and it's going to um, be kind to your brush as well. So I just want you guys to load and side to side. And then cover that whole area. Don't worry about what it looks like here. We're not worried about that. This is just practicing. I wanna get you guys familiar with using the brush. And it's a light movement, okay? You're really basically using this far down with the brush. You're not smashing it. You're just lightly covering, okay? Now I want you guys to dip see how it's angled this is the shorter angle in pink and i want you to dip the top part the longest part in purple leave the white on the brush so it should look like this this is how we're going to do a fade okay so same thing you're going to take the brush side to side keep it at one spot for the moment and then once you see how it's starting to blend, drag your brush down. That's gonna bring the purple and the pink down. Now, you wanna go always from the top down. Don't go bottom up because what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag your pink up there and you're gonna make one solid color. You wanna keep pink, purple up here and pink down here, okay? So side to side. We're gonna go back and do the same thing. Dip it again, same colors, same placement. And it's just gonna put another coat of paint on there. Bye, have fun. Hello. Bye, honey. And then drag it down. It's gonna look a little bit different on your white. This is purple, so it's just gonna look a little bit slightly different. But do you see the blend there? Purple and then the pink. That's what we're looking for. Did everybody do okay with that? Sorry, my comments are like super slow. Is everybody in a good place? You all kind of got that area? <clears throat> okay. So that's how you do a, fa a basic fade. Um, we're gonna switch from top to bottom on different areas and I'll tell you guys when I switch and what colors to do what, but that's basically how you do it, just a nice soft motion and then just make sure that you're keeping the colors separate, that you're not blending the colors. The more you go up and down, that's you're gonna make one solid color. You can do that, but for us, we wanna fade, okay? So now let's go over just some other things that we're gonna be doing here. Grab your middle brush. This is the second one down in that pack, if you guys got that pack. So we're gonna go to this brush. And you can take any color you want. Um, let's do blue. I'm gonna do blue, but you can pick whatever color you want. 
and then I'm going to put the very tip of it in black just a little bit which we won't be able to see actually let me do gray because we won't be able to see on that blackboard so it's going to look like that I'm going to have black in mine but you guys don't have to do that so now we're going to do the same thing and what I want you to do is just press down and we're going to make a mountain I want you to jiggle your hand up and down a little bit and make nice little peaks don't go like this okay that's not going to be a realistic mountain load your brush as you need okay so we're going to go up jiggle it a little bit because it's rocks remember down down go up and make another valley or another peak and then fade it down okay and then you can start back anywhere like i'm gonna start back up here where the paint was didn't catch as much and just go down and make a little bit more right there and then just pull it down now this mountain would be kind of in front of this one so i'm going to swipe this one down this way and then just go back over make sure you're never turning your brush you're always using the long tip towards the top and then just kind of smear those colors together like that So again, just one more time real quick, up, give yourself some gnarly little peaks. Bob Ross Mountains, that's right. We're not using oils, which he used. Um, these are like just craft acrylics and that's why you see this right here because craft acrylics are kind of dry and they're just they're just a cheaper paint there's a lot of water in them <clears throat> and oils are of course oil based so you get a lot smoother like a lotion almost so we'll have to go over ours a few times just to make them look what we want but i just want you guys to get the idea of how to make a mountain and how to make it look like a mountain like that how's everybody doing i don't know why but my comments are not showing <clears throat> okay next thing let's turn this this way watch your hands because you might get them in the paint and we're going to go to our pointer brush detail brush when you when you have these brushes um when they have a grip like this when you dip them in water they're going to hold water in here so try not to get the water above this area because the water will seep under this area and catch in this um, area right here. And then when you tip it down, all the water comes pouring down and you're gonna end up with a big puddle on your painting. So just make sure you're just kind of trying to get, make your water low enough to where it's just gonna get the brush part. And then make sure that when you're drying it, you're getting that whole handle from here down and get all that excess water off. Am I following a Bob Ross tutorial? No. All I have in front of me is is you guys can you switch where paint and the board is let me see I can try maybe rotate your screen screen and see if that helps or turn the comments off okay so load this brush with uh, I just chose gray because that's what we're gonna be using in the painting and you can see that it's not all the way up here. It's about three quarters away on the tip. And then we're gonna do a little bit of a dragging. So you're gonna lay it down like this, drag. As you come down on the board, you're gonna lift your paintbrush up. That's what's gonna give you a thinner line. If I lay this down, see what it does? It's just, we just want a thin line, so very lightly. Drag down and as you come up, lift it and then we're going to come over here like a little V down lift down lift that one got a little bit thick down lift and that's going to give you that little bit of a dragging motion no I'm right-handed it's just the way the screen's showing so down lift down lift down lift now the better you load your brush the longer of a swipe you're gonna get 
if I don't load my paintbrush very much and just do the very tip, it's going to be run out of paint. If I get a good load on there, so it looks like that at the end, and just use a light hand, I can do a couple swipes without having to go back so much. And then when it starts to get like that, you know you're starting to run out. Okay? Everybody kind of familiar with that? Does that working out for you guys? Anybody having any problems? Everybody's good? I tried to make this really easy for you guys so that everybody could do it and basically have a good result. Okay, so now we're gonna do little hearts. Okay, try to, try to flip your screen maybe so that it's long instead of short or turn it the other way and see if that helps. <clears throat> so load your brush again, I don't care what color it is. And this time you want a little bit, see how it's kind of got a ball of paint at the end? I put a little bit more paint on that. With a light hand, set your brush down and make a dot and then drag, dot, drag, dot, drag, dot, drag, dot, drag, like that. How's everybody doing? Good. Oh, those are such pretty hearts. They're like all colors. Okay, and then do single. <laughs> yes, party hearts. Just do single little teardrops. And don't worry if they're a little bit scraggly. It's not a big deal. I want it to be fun. Don't worry if it's not perfect or if you say, you know, oh, it looks different. That's okay. Everybody's going to have their own little look to their painting. Kind of like a fingerprint. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's rinse your brushes. And let's get to the real deal here, okay? Whoa, almost dropped my brush. <clears throat> okay, let's switch over to your white canvas. And let me know when you're switched and ready to rock and roll. Guys ready? Let me move it this way maybe. Sorry, I wanna see the I want you guys to be able to see the plate too, so maybe turn off your comments if you can't see it well. I want you to be able to see this. Okay, so load your brush with white. Back and forth, same motion, okay? And I want you to paint your whole board white. You'll be able to tell as you're painting if the paint feels smooth underneath you, because we're painting white on white, um, if you've got good coverage. And you can tell when you go to a dry area, it grabs the brush. Some more white. Okay. 
Make sure to get the corners really well. And the edges, because they'll stay a little bit dry if you don't pay attention to them. So nice thin coat. When you lift it up, you shouldn't see like any pools or um, like uh, thick lines of paint in it. If you do, just take some off your brush, of the paint off your brush, and then thin it out a little bit on your board. Okay. Now, you don't even have to rinse your brush or anything. I'm gonna reload mine because I kind of went, I rinsed mine on accident. And you're going to do the same thing. You're gonna dip in pink and purple. Same thing that we practiced with. On your plate, when you pull it, you should see that. It doesn't matter if the purple's longer than the pink or anything like that. It just matters that you have both colors. And you're gonna lay it down and back and forth. Oh, look how pretty it is already. See how much different it looks on the white. And then go ahead and reload if you need to, which you will, because we're gonna drag this down a bit. So what the paint's doing is it's mixing with the white that's still wet. and it's helping to blend it and make it really soft. And I just keep going over it. So now, now I'm gonna get closer to the color that I want. And now I'm gonna drag this down even further because we want it to be like a really soft, um, it's just beginning to be like a sunset out in the snow like that <clears throat> if you blended your purple too much and you don't see the purple just dip your tip in purple like that and go to the top and just go back over it okay now you're gonna rinse your brush. Get all that paint off of there. And we're gonna flip our canvas. So turn it around. Make sure not to set your hand down on it. If your brush has a little split in it like that, go like this so you don't have that split because that split will carry through your painting, okay? And then at the longest angle, I want you to load gray and at the shortest angle, blue. So it should look like that. And then same thing, we're gonna do exactly the same thing that we did at the top. I'm gonna wet my brush a little bit because it's kind of dry. Okay, everybody doing okay? Yes, it'll be saved. Okay, go back in and load your brush one more time. 
This time though you only need to load the blue. So just the blue at the bottom edge. And we're going to start right about here and we're just going to make a little hill. Just like that. How's everybody doing? Everybody kind of in this spot, everybody caught up? Rinse your brush off, because we're done doing that, and flip your canvas back over. So rinse your brush, give it a pinch, and set it aside. Yours is streaky. You can wet your brush a little bit. If you wet your brush and um, go back over it with a little bit of water, since it's water-based paint, just go over it again, and it will help blend it. And if it's still a little bit too dry, I want the plate in view. If it's still a little bit too dry, then you can just go and reload your brush again with paint. So load it first with white and then dip it in the blue and the gray all at the same time. And then go back over it and that will help take care of the streaks. Just basically just paint over it. That's the good thing about painting is there's really no mistakes because you can just fix it. I want the plate in view so you guys can see how I'm loading. <clears throat> okay. So now you're going to take your brush, this brush, got wild hair on that one. And we're going to um, make our mountains. You guys ready for mountains? Mountains! Good, everybody's got good results. Are you guys all happy with what you've created so far? Has anybody had any issues besides the streaking? So what I want you guys to do now is, um, and don't get worried about, oh my gosh, my ratios are off. It's no big deal, seriously. I want you to take a little bit of blue, just scoop it up with your brush, a little bit of your gray, and mix it together. And remember when you're mixing, try to be kind to your brush as much as possible. And get the excess off because you don't want it fat and all over your brush. Okay. And then I had a YouTube channel. Um, people don't tend to go over to YouTube channel. It's like, I don't know, most of my followers are on Instagram, so that's where everybody tends to hang out. And Instagram's made it pretty easy to do live videos and save videos and stuff like that. So um, it's just not worth it. It's kind of a pain. Okay, so once you've got your brush loaded, I want you to dip it into just a little bit of black. Not heavy, just just the little tip. Little tippy whippy, like that. And then on your plate next to wherever you're working, just kind of give it a little swipe so that you can get some of that paint off and blended. Because we don't want anything, I wanna to try to keep the, the, the painting soft, not too heavy, okay? So now we're gonna start with our mountains. I'm gonna start eh, right about here. Okay, so that's what, what, about two inches off? We're gonna start right down here and just have fun with it. Don't worry about it too much if it's not perfect or doesn't look like mine. Just make your own little mountains. And you're just gonna drag And you can use the other side of the brush too. Make sure if you, if you want, you know, you'll have paint on the other side too. If you start running out of paint, flip your brush over. It's kind of fun when you're in nature 
to really look at mountains and clouds and things like that because they'll teach you a lot if you really pay attention that they're never perfect. They just kind of do their own thing. Okay, so you can see where this is streaky and that's perfectly fine. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over this and just drag my paint down to smooth it out a little bit. Just drag it down. And then here, I'm gonna just whoop, swipe it out. And then it's just quick motions down here, just drag it down. Now rinse off your brush, get it clean. Leave a little bit of water on it and just go over the bottom of this. Again, this is because this is not oils. I know if you've ever watched Bob Ross or anything like that, it just blends without having to do that, but this is not oils, it's acrylic, so we have to re-wet it because it dries quickly. And we're just gonna blend it out a little bit. Now go back to the paint that you mixed, add a little bit more black, just a little bit, not too heavy, but I want you to have a little bit of a darker color, and we're just gonna make some shadows on this mountain on this side. So everything on the left side, start at your peak, and then come down. Let me load this a little bit more, let me get a little more paint on there. So we're gonna work our way from the left and just kind of fall down like this, and then maybe just kinda of drag it down here a little bit. If you do little actions like this, it makes it seem more like rocks. <laughs> I told you I grew up on Bob. I, he influenced me more than I could ever imagine. Okay, same thing on this side. Now I want this side to kind of come down here. So I'm gonna start here and just come down right there. And maybe he's got a little friend right there. Okay, that gives our mountains a little bit of dimension. Yeah, happy mountains. <laughs> they don't like to be lonely. And if you get it too dark or you get it too light, just go back and fix it. You can go back over it, it's no big deal. So I want this one to be a little bit darker. I'm gonna go back and just make it a little bit darker. And do you see the little, act, the little tapping, little tappy wappy that I'm doing with my brush? That gives it kind of a rock fill. and then just drag it down. So let's do one more mountain, because they're fun. Yes, this is all deco art paints. I put a list in the highlights of the paints that I'm using. So we're gonna go right here. Let's do this one just a little bit lower And right there, I'm gonna wet my brush just a little bit with water and it will help make that blend. There we go. See what it did there? It just getting a little bit of water on there. And then here, and then just drag it out. Thanks, Kristen. Okay, and same thing, we're gonna drag it down. And don't worry about this being streaky. We're gonna add some white to that, so don't worry about it. <laughs> and same thing, you're gonna go back. Let's add some darkness to there on that left side. Maybe it shows right on your side, but it's on my left. Yes, I'll save it. Like that. Maybe a little bit more 
rocks on that side. If my video runs, like if it, if it goes off and we haven't finished, I'll rejoin again and we'll finish it up. So if you lose the connection or if it says video ending, it's, I'll come back. How's everybody doing? Do they have happy mountains? Precision comes with practice. Enough practice and you'll get the precision. <clears throat> okay, everybody's got their happy mountains going, it looks like. <laughs> okay, so clean, clean your brush. Give it a little smooth out there. And let's go to white and let's give this a little bit of a blend here so we can get rid of these streaks. So load your brush. And just like we did at the top with the same motions, it's just a back and forth motion. Let's blend this and make it look like mist. As you get towards the mountains, you wanna lighten up your pressure so that it blends a little bit easier. So the tip of the, tip of the brush is just whispering against the mountains, if that makes sense. And that's gonna give you that mist look. How's everybody's Misty Mountains? Mm, I like to paint a lot of things. I like to paint landscapes and clouds and I like characters. I really don't have, I like anything. I try to take everything on as a challenge every time I do it and try to make it better each time. Okay, how's your guys' mist looking? Doing good? Did everything blend well? Anybody have streaks or anything like that? Any issues with that? Okay, so now what we're gonna do, I didn't do this on my original, but I think I wanna do a little bit here just, just for the hell of it. Um, let's mix a little bit of blue, gray. Gray, come on gray. And white. Cloudy too thick, put a little water with it. So put some water on your brush and go back over it and thin it out. And if it's getting muddy, just let it dry a little bit and then just go back over it with the white paint. Yes, I love doing portraits. Okay, so actually I didn't practice this at all, so we're all gonna be in the same boat here. Um, let's just kinda go like this. So I'm just wiggling the brush back and forth and taking it right up to the edge of that hill. Don't worry about it if you get a little crossover action, it doesn't matter because this is gonna be covered in snow. And then let's do our detail brush with, let's do a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue, and a touch of white. Do you think that, um, a little bit. I kind of like just let it lead me wherever it wants to go. 
with the image when I'm when I'm just like freehand painting I just kind of let it tell me where it wants to go so let's do little trees I want you just to start right about here we're gonna have our um, are like those those frozen willow tree branches right here so I don't want to put too much in this area so let's start right about right here just take your brush and draw a line down and then just tap it out from the center like this and make your trees different heights and let the branches kind of get funky because trees are funky they're never perfect just drive yourself up to the mountains and try to cut a Christmas tree and you're gonna find that out real quick and leave spaces see how there's a space right there Try to leave some spaces between your branches. That will make it seem more realistic. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Are you guys having fun at Disney World? So we're just going to do a little grouping of trees. They're just out here partying on their own. They're like, haha, we're over here across this lake. Looking so cute. And then let's just take that color and just swipe it down. Swipe it down. Like that. That looks cute. I like that. Okay, rinse your brush too. <laughs> you can never have a bad time in Disney World. So rinse your detail brush. Make sure to roll it out on the paper towel so it has a nice, <laughs> has a nice point. <laughs> oh, B, get him in line, B. How's everybody doing? How's your tappy trees? Did they work out okay for you? Did you guys do okay with your spacing? We didn't practice that, so I just want to make sure everybody's kosher on it. Someone is. <laughs> oh, there we go. The kittens are doing good. They're actually behaving. I thought for sure they'd be up here because whenever I start painting, here they come. <laughs> okay. So let's go and we're going to, this area right here is going to be like a little snow hill in the background. So go ahead and take this brush right here. And um, I want you to make a light pink. So you're gonna take a little bit of pink and a lot of white and mix her up. Doesn't look like yours, but it will be okay. No, it looks like yours. Okay, so kind of like a really light pink. And um, I want you to um, take a lot of this off your brush. I'm, I'm just gonna show you the color right now, but I want this to kind of come off the brush so your brush is empty. And then take a little, so you're gonna scoop the paint with your brush like this, and you're gonna get a little bit of a line. So basically you're working with a, a dry brush with a little line of paint at the end. <clears throat> Thank you about my nails. <laughs> How do you get your paint blended throughout the brush? Um, you mean like when I mix the paints or when I when we're doing fades? You're getting a dark streak in it. At what part? If you're getting streaks when we're doing like Oh, when you're mixing, just keep mixing. I, I put it in a little pile, so I scoop it, and then I put it in a little pile, and then I just keep mixing like in that little pile, and then scoop it again and keep mixing. 
just keep working it. I have a lot of mixing practice, so I'm a little fast at it, but just keep working it and you'll get there. And streaking is not gonna matter too much with these two colors because they're gonna be pretty close. Okay, so you have your little roll there. I want you to lay down the brush. Now, when you're holding this brush at this point, if somebody was to walk by, I want them to be able to just take that brush right out of your hand. That's how loose you're holding it. It's a very, very light grip, okay? It's not like this. You don't have a death grip on it or anything like that. For this, we need a very, very light grip because what you're gonna do, I'm not gonna do it right now, I'm just gonna tell you, you're gonna lay it down and you're gonna let the brush, the, your hand is gonna pull the brush, but the brush is basically gonna drag. Like if you were to have like, um, a string dragging behind you with something heavy on it and you were walking, that's the motion of the brush going across the canvas. It's gonna be so light, okay? So we're just gonna kinda let it drag. And you want little striations like this, okay? So go back and load again. And if you, like right here, I got a little bit heavy. I, I didn't tap up enough. So if you get that, you can just tap. But the point is to see a little bit of the blue behind it. <laughs> Bob Ross would be proud. Good old Bob. I hope he's looking at us from heaven right now and saying, you know, something specially um, positive and energetic. Like, I'm so happy. God bless those people painting down there on earth. <laughs> Using my skills. Okay, how's everybody doing? That was kind, That's kind of a tricky little thing to do. And I think people will tend to overanalyze that too much. Don't overanalyze, it's no big deal. It's really not. Just as long as you have some blue, you can even flip your brush and see, see how my angle was this time. It was like this. I can go back as long as my point doesn't go beyond this blue and just add some more this way. And it will make it look like not so even of stripes that way. Just give a little tap. Okay, now rinse your brush and we're gonna reload it in the same way. Oh, I'm sorry, Germany. I will save it so you can go back. As long as I don't have some kind of technical difficulties, it will be saved. So let's go back and get some white on our brush, just at the very tip. And you're gonna go right over this. And what we're doing is just create a little bit of dimension, just a little bit of color effect, um, just so it's not one color. and then just kind of blend it down. Don't worry about if there's streaks or anything. It's really not a big deal, I promise. Rinse your brush and load the tip with white. Now with your tip, you're just gonna go like this. Little feathering actions. So I'm dragging the brush, lifting it up, dragging the brush, lifting it up, dragging the brush, lifting it up. Like that. So if you have a lot, a lot of blue showing, just go over it, tap over the blue a little bit. The paint's pretty thin, so it will still show the blue behind it. Um, there's gonna be other stuff right here, so that's why we're not carrying it down. And then while you still have some white on the tip of that brush, let's just go over this area just slightly. So just with a feather motion, maybe turn your comments off. So we want some snow on this area here a little bit, not quite so gray. Let me go this way. So 
see if that helps you guys. Sometimes when I move the painting around, I lose direction of where I'm at too. <clears throat> I start to pull it towards me. Is that better? Maybe that way. So how is everybody's looking? I just wanna make sure I'm checking in with you guys so that you guys are not too far behind or lost or anything like that. Everybody guys doing okay? Show me some hearts so I can tell you're doing okay. Thumbs up works too. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay, so in the purple, same brush, in the purple by itself, no other colors mixed with it, load up your brush, and we're gonna make our first purple bush. And I did a square bush because I wanted to bring a little bit of Sleeping Beauty into it. <laughs> So again, I don't want you guys to be worried about the edges of this because it's a bush. So we're just going to go, let's leave a little bit of the snow there. Let's go like right here, next to this smaller mountain. And let's put a square. Yeah, you can stop here, it's fine. and then just fill up your square. Olaf is gonna be staying in front of this. Uh, the reason I chose such a bright and dark color or darker for this paint is because I want Olaf to stand out. Okay, so once you get the square, just reload your brush. You can do just the point if you like, the top point. And I want you just to do little edges like that. So you're just using high the point of your brush and it's gonna look like little leaves popping out. He's a hairy, he's a hairy bush. <laughs> uh, lots of leaves. Try rotating your screen to turn off your comments and then you won't have the comments blocking the painting. I want the painting to show with along with the plate of paint so I can't change it. And then once you do that, Just smooth it back out. You only have to go halfway down on this side uh, because there's gonna be another bush right there. So you don't need to bring the leaves all the way there. And then if you see this through this, don't worry, we're gonna put a second layer on this um, once it dries <clears throat> so that it's not so see-through. Okay, now mix blue and purple. Yes, the video will be saved. I'll save it for the 24 hours because that's all I can do, but then I'll probably, um, someone suggested for me to put it on Facebook. I'll try doing that. I'll try to make sure it's somewhere where you guys can get access to it, and I'll let you know where it's at. So mix some purple and blue, and we're going to do a round bush right next to this. Okay, so start here and just swipe down, swipe down, fill it in. And same thing, just get your edges and add some little texture for leaves. Uh, 
and then smooth it back out. Like that. And we're gonna be done with that brush for a little bit. So let's switch over to our detail brush. Go ahead and put it in the water a little bit, get a little bit uh, wet, and you're gonna flip your painting over. Make sure not to grab it by the area you just touched. So you're gonna flip it over this way. Is this based on something in particular? No, just it's a Valentine's Day winter scene. Okay, let's go into um, gray, your gray color. If your paint's starting to get gummy over here, get some fresh paint. I'm gonna get a little bit of fresh gray because this one's, oh, dip my arm in there. This one's a little bit, get a little dry. And for this action, this is when we're doing the long swipes, we're gonna need the paint something, uh, we're gonna need the paint wet. So grab some gray and mix some white with it. And we're gonna make some branches. So start about right here. And remember those, I'm gonna add a little bit more gray because it's a little bit light. There we go. Remember that little action that we did? You're just going to bring that all the way up to the top. When you start filling your um, brush run out of paint, just go back and get some more. And then make sure that just like your trees that you did here, make sure you're doing different um, levels. They're not all the same length. Otherwise it will start looking uh, not so natural and it doesn't add any interest to the painting. And if it got a little bit streaky where the canvas was catching it, just go back over it. No biggie. Yeah, let's do a longer one. And if your branches are a little bit crooked, it's okay. No biggie deal. There's ice dripping off of these, so it would not hang perfectly straight anyway. Straight is boring. Okay, and this time add just a touch of black and gray. Not too dark, don't make it too dark. We don't want them to be um, too dark because we want to keep our painting kind of light and in the pastel-y type theme. But we also want to add dimension to our branches. We don't want the branches should not all be hanging at one um, like you, all the branches are not hanging in a line. They're gonna be some over here, some closer to you, some further away. So we want to make sure we're kind of getting a little bit of that into our painting. So a little bit darker. Let's put a little short guy right here. And let's put a short one right here. Try not to go into your trees because those are too cute to cover up. 